Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Latin Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And for this week's roundtable panel, we've got Eric Peterson, all the way from beautiful Tennessee, Tate Litchfield in Las Vegas, Nevada, which I think we should discuss a little bit. Uh, Scott Todd, by the way, if you don't know, Scott Todd's got a few websites, scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. And most importantly, if you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook's postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Today's podcast is actually sponsored by postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek for our round table podcast. Thank you, Scott, for generously uh, sponsoring us. And last but not least, he's wicked awesome. All the way from Haverhill, Massachusetts. You did it right. I did it right. See, I'm learning. It's wicked awesome that I'm learning. I'm going to get some clam chata with Mike Zeno, the Zen master. Mike, how are you? I'm fantastic. I get to see you guys in a few days. I know. I'm, I'm so excited for, uh, for boot camp. And Scott already has a host of restaurants slated for us. I'm very excited. None of them involving Panera Bread. No, no. None of them. So it's going to be great. It's going to be great. All right. So the panel, let's talk about uh, off, like, you know, Scott, tell the story about an offer. And this we see a lot, by the way, uh, with, with sending out offers, you know, and kind of prejudging them. So I'm looking at an offer. Like I'm looking at like this list and on this list, it shows me how much they bought the property for, right? So I'm looking at this property, Mark, where the person bought the property here for, um, for $80,000. Okay. Now they bought it some time ago and uh, they probably overpaid us in the peak. And, but it's on there. It shows me it's $80,000 is what they paid. And I'm about to mail them an offer for $6,407. And in your mind, like your mind tells you that there's no way that they're going to accept $6,407 for something they paid $80,000 for, right? So, you know, I know a lot of people struggle. Like, do you mail? Do you scrub them from your list? What do you do? Eric Peterson, what do you do? Well... Um, you know, I, I tend not to look at that information if I have it. Um, yeah, I just kind of ignore that column. Um, but I think that I would still mail them, you know, I mean, what's the worst that can happen? They're going to call you and yell at you. Um, you know, we get that all the time anyways. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's the cost of a stamp. Um, no big deal. Uh, yeah, I'd mail them. Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. Yeah, what I'm definitely. I'm gonna mail them. I mean, you never know what their situation is, right? Maybe they need a tax loss. You don't know, and you won't know unless you drop an offer in the mail. And like Eric, I don't, I don't spend a ton of time looking at that either. I mean, I figure they're either gonna play ball with me or they're gonna yell at me. So, it doesn't matter to me. Yeah. How about you, Zen Master? I delete that column. I would tell somebody right away, don't even look at it. Um, it's just that can lead uh, many people, especially new into the uh, old paralysis by over analysis. They're going to really start wigging out and second guessing themselves. Um, so I, I would think that in the beginning, that's something that, especially in the beginning, if not always just take that column and delete it. And who cares? Yeah, I mean, you know what's so you funny know. about that is I think it hurts everybody having that column. I think it hurts uh, people like me who've been doing this forever, and I think it hurts the newbies. Here's a good example, right? Jeff Axton bought a 640-acre parcel for 15 grand. I would never offer that low for 640. Like, I just, like, I'm trapped by expertise. I'm like, oh, well, you know, I know the market, and I've seen the comps, and 32,000 seems about right, and that's, you know, 25 cents on the dollar. He got it for 15,000 just out of naivete, just by being in Haverhill and just not knowing anything, right? Oh, I think I guess I just had, I just saw off of fifteen thousand. Like, are you kidding me? But he got it. So that's the thing. It's like you just have to send out offers, and and sometimes it's a huge advantage not knowing, right? 
Um, the fact that Eric Peterson didn't know this horrible seller that I was dealing with in Colorado, he didn't care. He just, you know, got the deal right from out from under me because I stopped dealing with him because I didn't like him. Right. Um, and so it's just the naivete. And uh, I, I think that that could be an advantage. But if you're not naive and you're looking at the data and you're prejudging it, analysis by paralysis or paralysis, I should say paralysis by analysis can take you hold. Scott Todd, any, anything else you want to talk about? No, I think that, I think it's, I think that's right. I mean, I think that, you know, it's easy, it's easy to make decisions and prejudge. I mean, it's the same way, like when, when you're buying something or, or selling something, you know, you look at something and you put yourself in that person's shoes, but you have no idea what, where they're walking or where they are. I mean, I mean, in this case, yeah, they paid eighty thousand dollars, and they may have, they may regret that every single day for the rest of their lives, right? Like, and that's, but you know what? Maybe, maybe they need sixty four hundred and seven dollars, or maybe they need sixty five hundred dollars right now to pay the tax man or to something else, right? Like, it's just in like in Monopoly. Sometimes you have to sell stuff at a loss, and that's just the way that it is. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, let's go on to our next topic. Unless there's something else we want to talk about with that topic. Oh, Can like we move, should we move on? Sure. Yeah. All right. So this is something that comes up a lot. What makes or what qualifies or what qualifications should you have when you're looking to hire a VA? Eric Peterson, what do you look for? Well, typically I'm going to post an ad um, that, basically describes the task or the job that I want them to do. Um, and I'm going to have them submit a cover letter and, you know, um, maybe answer a couple questions that ap apply to that particular job. And um, as far as qualifications, I mean, you know, for example, if it's scrubbing a list, I mean, I'm going to want to make sure they can do Excel and, and different things like that, but I don't spend a whole lot of time, I guess, digging into those details, what I do instead is, you know, take a look at the replies that come in and um, pick what, you know, the, the few that seem to be the best um, and offer them a trial um, and just get started on, you know, with two or three of them, let them try out the work, see how it goes for both of us. And then we go from there. Scott Todd, what do you think of that answer? I like it. I mean, I think that, uh, I think that, again, I think that people over, over analyze stuff. And, uh, when in fact you just, just kind of take action and lean into it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mike Zano, how about you? Yeah. The, I mean, the proof's going to come in that job performance. So definitely <clears throat> we want to make sure they have the requirements of what you're looking for, but, uh, don't hesitate. Give them some tasks and you just got to watch them. And it's a relationship you develop over time. It truly is. I mean, sometimes people ask about whether or not, you know, how do you hire a trustworthy uh, VA? Well, you hire a VA and then they become trustworthy. It's not that they are trustworthy from the beginning. I mean, they may be, but we don't know, right? It's like when you meet someone for the first time, that level of trust has to be established. So that just comes over time. I mean, so you can build, uh, you know, the idea that this person is reputable in what they do maybe in a month or so, right? But to develop the deep level trust to give them, you know, deeper uh, ass, you know, um, access into your business, stuff like that takes time. You know, it's going to take time and performance. It's a relationship. Absolutely. It's a relationship. Uh, Tate Litchfield, how about you? Yeah, Rome wasn't built in a day. <laughs> you know, it takes time and hiring a VA you never know. People surprise me all the time. I think, oh, this person's not going to be the right one for the job or they, they might not have any experience doing this. And you spend half hour with them and they get it and report back to you. And it's like, oh, fantastic. You exceeded my expectations. So you got to give everybody a chance. And uh, when you find somebody that's really, really good, make sure you hang on to them, treat them right. Yeah. You know what someone should do is start a business that has pre-trained VAs yeah, yeah. to save you all that time and energy <laughs> posting an ad on Upwork, Ooh, hiring yeah. them, interviewing them, then training them. And like, Where can we find someone out. like this though? I, 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 wish, I wish there was a, a way that we could I would, I would call magic it VAs dot the land geek. No. <laughs> I was thinking, I was thinking VAs dot posting domination dot com. <laughs> no, no. I, I, I couldn't imagine that anybody would have the... <laughs> 
the skill set, the intelligence, the 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 mental fortitude the good to go looks. through that much pain to train that many people. Oh, wait a second. Someone did do that. Danielle Diva. She did it. VAs.thelandgeek.com. Uh, we have pre-trained VAs ready to go at your disposal. I think we're taking like five more people on next month. You know, we, we have uh, space now in the Philippines. Like, I, I love the fact that like I'm employing all these people now. It, it feels great. I haven't Scott, well, Scott, are you going to, are you going to go to the Philippines and like uh, look at the operation and, you know, I would love to, my wife is really not happy about me going there. So, <laughs> you know, it's stranger I mean, danger. You, you have to be gone like, I don't know, two weeks or something, right? I know. And Irv, Irv Siegel, uh, like, has a place there. Like, I have a place to stay even. What? He's got, like, a condo. He's got condos there. Like, nice. Like, in, in Manila. I'm not sure. I, I don't think our office is in Manila, but it's, like, just south of that. Man, Tate, look at you. You're global. Well, Tay would go with me. He's, he's like, a world-class traveler. Yeah. I'll definitely. go with you, man. I'll go with you. You can you go with me. Can fly him. Scott yeah. could fly yeah, us there. No, no, no. I can't fly you. <laughs> Come on, Scott. No, 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 no. That's, I'll play for gas. Yeah, yeah no. I, no. <laughs> no, you don't want that. Trust me. You need a little yeah, bit more yeah. training for that, huh? Um, not, not to ruin the mood, but I do think we needed to talk about Tate and Vegas. Tate lives in Vegas. We had a horrible, horrific tragedy, another horrific tragedy. And, um, you know, he was actually personally affected by it. Do you want to tell the story, Tate? Yeah. I mean, I live probably about seven miles away from the Mandalay Bay. So this is an area that uh, I know personally, and uh, I call Vegas home. I've called it home for you know 15 years now, give or take. And um, we were deeply, it's just been a, a terrible act. Of, but it's it's been really amazing to see our community come together and, the support of, you know, our firefighters and the SWAT and the police, police department. I mean, they've, they've really gone above and beyond the call of duty, but unfortunately, you know, I do have a couple of friends who uh, were, were injured and I do have a good friend of mine who lost uh, two of their best friends there with them. So it's uh, struck a little close to home for me and uh, it's been really tragic, but, the community's really come together and, uh, you know, we're going to get through it and the country will get through it. And, uh, if anything, it made me seriously reflect on how grateful I am to, you know, have what I do and work the way that I do, because I was able to go inside and spend the day with my family and, and just really embrace them. So it's been a, it's been a humbling experience and a somber one for our, for our city, but yeah. Yeah, Scott, what are you going to say? No, I was just going to say it's, you know, it's, um, it's terrible. Like, you know, the Pulse nightclub, I didn't live in, I didn't live in Orlando at the time, but obviously I live in Florida. And, you know, when, when some, I did live in Orlando at one time. And so I knew where that place was, um, you know, and so when something like that happens, it really does like shake the core of, you know, the, the community and even you, cause you're like, man, it's like right there. Like, Maybe I, maybe I would have been at that concert if, you know, like, I don't know, like, you know, you, you don't know where you would be if you were in a certain city. Um, but I know it's, it's always like, you know, it's, it's crazy what, you know, when you start to think about like what could happen, but, well, um, you know, Tim, I mean, Tim, I'm glad you're okay. And, you know, sorry to yeah. hear about your friends. You know, it's uh, it was interesting. Our community, we, Immediately once it happened, the, the community responded and they asked for people to come donate blood. And I went down to donate yesterday and the line to even donate blood at the four facilities in Vegas was, it was like a nine hour wait. And I went and, and they actually turned me away and said, make an appointment online and come back next week. And I tried to log on and make an appointment and they're not accepting reservations to walk in until next week, middle of next week at this point. So you know, our community is going to get through it and, uh, you know, hopefully we can stop the needlessness, you know, the senseless acts of violence in the world. Yeah. But I think the, the interesting thing about all these, you know, sort of existential crises that, you know, we go through in life and, you know, witnessing the horrific tragedies or even just sort of the, the randomness of it all, like someone getting just struck with cancer one day. Um, 
I think that out of that comes sort of this, like what you said, Taylor, like this, this depth of gratitude for every single moment in your life, you know, and, you know, I do joke with Mike about being the Zen master, but it's, there is something that is, uh, there's a sort of tranquility in, in, in Mike that, you know, when you have that, you're not sort of lost in the day to day and you can just, you know, enjoy something as simple as breathing in and breathing out. Right. And, and, and having that gr- gratitude, um, I think can add sort of a, the, a layer of, of tranquility, a layer of, uh, uh, of happiness in, in, in essentially to your life. And um, I'm getting really into stoic philosophy and what they would do is they would n- do a lot of negative visualization. So when they would kiss their wife, they would kiss their kids, they would then visualize them. That'd be the last time they kissed them. Right. And then when they woke up the next day, they were so grateful to have them there next to them. And, and just, uh, again, it all comes kind of, kind of down to, to gratitude. Um, Mike, anything you want to add to that? No, I think you're hitting it right. It's just, um, you know, I, I, things that happen such as this in Vegas and what Scott was talking about and just, you know, I see a lot of things just day, uh, day to day in the fire department, you know, people suffering and dying of all different ways. And it does cause you to, you know, to reflect upon uh, what's important. Right. And so I definitely, uh, I totally agree. You know, it, it's, you see what people don't have and you realize what you do have and that's gratitude. Right. And hopefully you can have it again tomorrow, but who knows? So yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting. We're just not wired that way. And there's good reasons why we're not wired that way because otherwise nobody would get anything done. Right. Yeah. But we, we're sort of wired to like, you know, hustle and go out and do more and, and, you know, like kind of just, you know, compare and contrast and compete and, you know, what gets lost in that is sort of the, the simpler things in life because we are so fragile and uh, it's just, you know, what I, that's kind of what I love about our land investing niche is that it does allow you uh, both things in life, right? It allows you that passive income piece so that you can really go out and work with people you want to work with, you know, live where you want to live and, and do what you want to do on your own terms and have that total freedom and that total flexibility once the passive income exceeds your fixed expenses. Um, I don't know a better way of achieving it with less headache. I'd, I'd be open to it if Eric Peterson has any ideas, but I don't know if he does. Eric, is there anything better? No, no. I don't think so. Not even life insurance? I used to think it was life insurance. Because <laughs> life insurance is just an idea. You don't have to go out and buy anything. Yeah, I don't. I, <laughs> I'd rather deal in land than life insurance. I don't know. I, I do like the idea. It's a physical of, thing. I like the idea, Mark, of the, uh, never could figure out how to do, pull it off though. The, the warranty on electronics, right? Like, hey, hey buy this electronic and, uh, you know, we'll give you, uh, you know, some money. If it, if it breaks, you know, you pay us like $20 or $100, like Apple Care, right? Like Apple Care has got to be like a massive revenue source for Apple. That's a great business, our warranties. Yeah. I agree. How about factoring? Factoring is a great business. Yeah, that's good too. Yeah, nothing physical there. There's all these little niches out there. But as far as, you know, all those things are concerned, that takes tremendous amounts of capital to get going. Where I think like life insurance doesn't, you know, you just get hired by a life insurance company, get trained. And land investing, you just listen to a couple podcasts or go to flight school, get trained. Anyways. Yeah, but the, also the beautiful thing about the land is it's, I think it's empowering. You create this yourself of your own volition, your own act, actions. You, from literally nothing, you can create this business you know so it's not like you're being hired by somebody so it's got that whole other aspect that it is passive but you create yourself and that's i think it's a very empowering as opposed to being hired by somebody and given you know now go sell life insurance right yeah no i i agree and also the fact that the worst case scenario unlike you know a warranty business or a factory business is you own an actual an asset you yes. own raw land that's not a bad worst case scenario especially if you're buying at 25, 30 cents of the dollar, where if you started a factoring business, well, you've got nothing at the end of it, if it doesn't go well. And 
another factoring company comes in and swallows you up, you've got nothing there. Uh, you know, same thing with, uh, say, the warranty business, uh, essentially. So, um, but let's, let's move on to our last topic, shall we? This is a fun one. Let's do. Let's get to know the geeks a little bit more. So, people who listen to the podcast, <laughs> they, they feel like they know us, but do they really, really know us that well? So, I'm going to go around and ask the panel to tell us something that, <clears throat> what don't we know about you? to get to know you a little bit better. Eric Peterson, what don't we know about you? All right. Well, I mean, where to start? But uh, now, I mean, I guess the, the one thing that, that comes to mind is um, uh, prior to, to starting land investing, um, and I, I actually still work with my father-in-law now, but, um, but prior to starting land investing, I was um, working with him and uh, – I helped to uh, renovate the Mama Cash House here in Tennessee. Um, he had purchased um, this house, which was across the street from Johnny Cash's house that that burnt down in Hendersonville, Tennessee. And uh, the prior owners had basically uh, just painted over a bunch of stuff and, and really just made a mess of it. Um, so he purchased this house and he wanted to take it back to its original state. And um, so I kind of was his uh, go between on that and uh, worked with all the contractors and, and kind of rehab the whole thing, start to finish with them. And um, so that was, that was kind of a fun project an interesting project that we did. And um, then more recently um, he acquired Johnny Cash's um, farm in Benacqua, Tennessee, and we turned that into a museum um, and a concert venue. So um, just kind of two interesting things I've been involved in here. That is really cool. Favorite Johnny Cash song? Um, wow. Probably Mike One Piece at a Time. One Piece at a Time? How does that go? Yeah. It's about... Uh, no, sing a it. Cadillac factory. Oh, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. oh just... I like that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good song. Wait, wait, wait. I'm, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put on Apple right oh, now. That's One. great, man. Yeah, like, because he, <laughs> yeah. But I, I'm so, and we, we have car. that car at the museum, actually. Really? So, yeah, it exists, and it's, it's out there in Binacqua. So, it's pretty cool. Can you guys hear it? Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is a good song, Mark. Mike Zeno is in heaven. Yeah. Mike, Mike loves this. I, I, li I like the Folsom Prison Blues song. Yeah. <laughs> what about a boy named Sue? That one's awesome. Oh, boy named yeah. Sue is great. He, he's kind of underrated, isn't he, Johnny Cash? Or not? I don't know. I I think it depends on on who you talk to. I mean, or where you live, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he's pretty big here in Tennessee. So I, I love the movie Walk the Line. Yeah, I think he's actually part of the highway, man. He is. He is. Yes, he is. is. You should be in heaven, now, man. <laughs> you bet. I, I'm gonna have to come like, every night. Every I'm night, night. I'm gonna have to come pick you up, Mike, and fly you down to Tennessee so you can go to the farm. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tate Litchfield, what don't we know about you? Uh, it's hard to follow that. I, mean, I know. I'm glad you put the tape geez. next. Thank you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Not me. I have been <laughs> to five of the seven continents <laughs> on the earth. I, wow. have, I need to get to Australia and Antarctica, and then I'll have visited everywhere. Wow. Why would you go to Antarctica? Just to say you've been there? Check it. Just a, it's a bucket list, right? Could you ice fish there? Like, what can you do on the Antarctica? You go. I, I mean, you go on a cruise. I guess you, it doesn't even sound that glamorous. Actually, I was reading a blog about a guy who went there recently, and they were on like a research vessel, and it was ridiculously expensive. And they just kind of pulled up to a chunk of land or ice, and he jumped off, got his photo taken, and then they got back on the vessel and kind of called it but i don't know I'm, I'm this close at this point i'm committed right i don't have a choice 
Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Mike Zeno and I could do the Wim Hof method in Antarctica. We'd be like, oh, we're not cold at all. My pool's getting cold. I did it this morning. Did you do there, it? Oh, yeah. There's a nice. Johnny Cash song about that too, right? I've been everywhere. Yeah. I've been everywhere, man. So. Yeah, pretty good. There you pretty go. Pretty good. Not as good as uh, my Boston accent, but pretty, pretty. I like the meat potatoes when you do from Florida. That's my favorite accent. <laughs> pretty good. By the way, do you hear like the, my Curb Your Enthusiasm, Larry David impersonation? Pretty, pretty, pretty. I love Curb. Uh, all right, Tate. How about you, Mike Zeno? What Jeez, don't we know uh, about you? Well, let's see. I'm probably the only, I'll say I'm probably the only Boston person you guys talk to and know. I'm not into sports. I don't follow sports. And this is like, I'm only firefighter that I know who doesn't follow sports. They all get it after 20 years. They all, I'm like the, uh, the, you know, they make the jokes and all that, but it doesn't bother me. I just, I'd rather read a book. The Patriots are playing in the Super Bowl. I'm in the other room. I'm trying to keep these guys down. Why are you so loud? It's the Patriots in the Super Bowl. I'm like, what? I don't even know. So I, I don't, I don't follow sports. It's not my thing. So I don't know. Um, that's one thing. And I secretly eat sweet bread during all these meetings. That's my other thing. <laughs> Ooh. I'm just trying I'm, them all I'm out. Telling, I'm I telling Laura. I can bring the right one to you, Scott. So I've been testing them. Mike, L- Laura's not going to be happy. You're going, I thought you were doing paleo. We're supposed to, but see, I'm, I'm suffering for Scott. I'm <laughs> suffering so I can bring the right loaf to him this week. Only a couple days left. If I get it wrong, Scott's going to be upset. I, I've been testing them all. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. Orlando's going to be great for you, Scott. There's Todd. my loaf. This is not the one you'll get, Scott. This will be bad by then. <laughs> Here, here's the loaf. Here's one slice left because I've been eating it all. <laughs> you, you know, Mike, you know what's interesting about that? My middle son is the same way. He doesn't lo- – I, I love sports. My oldest son loves sports. My daughter doesn't really care about sports. My there's my wife. But like, my middle son looks at me. He's like, Dad, you're not playing. Why do you care? I'm yeah. like – yeah, I, it's a psychological disorder, son. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. He's like, he's like, you didn't accomplish anything. Like, what, oh. He's like, you didn't lose anything. He's like, they, you think they're going to care about you? Oh. If, if uh, you know, I wore a Bruins one time. I went to a, Laura and I went to a bar together, a nice little meal. Nobody in there, real quiet. One other couple. And I'm wearing, I only bought it because I liked the color. <laughs> The way the colors look, it was on. It was a Bruins shirt. I just I zipped it up. Guy, Bruins, what's your face? It's like an hour long. Ask me questions about the Bruins. I'm like, oh man, never again, never again. <laughs> didn't didn't Gordy Howe play for the Bruins? I don't know. <laughs> Speaking don't, of I don't, sports, I don't, I don't how about know. the Las Vegas Golden Knight hockey team? Huh? Any hockey fans out there? We're all American, oh. Tate. Oh, jeez. Tate's well, from Canada. <laughs> yeah, I'm from Canada. I guess that's another thing people didn't know. But look, look at this picture. We got, uh, obviously, hockey's important to us here. And, well, it's important to me. Look at this. I took a uh, little baby Daisy. Oh, can I not upload it? Sure. Oh, the little baby girl. Look at this. I took the baby to her first Golden Knight hockey game the other night. We're so still in preseason. her? Yeah, I was babysitting. We went to the hockey game. <laughs> oh, I got to see this. <laughs> take a look at that photo. Just take a look at that. <laughs> oh, she's got the little pink headphones on. She is so Yeah, it was loud her. in there. It was loud. Wow. We had to protect her ears. Yeah, so when you're in Vegas, maybe we can schedule our next boot camp around it a hockey game because I got season tickets. So. Oh, I didn't get like definitely, that. Definitely, definitely. Uh, wow. Awesome. Well, Scott Todd, what do we know about you? All right. Well, you know, this is a little. Um, this you're, is you're, pri- you're a private guy, aren't you? No, no, no. I'm I'm not a private guy. Um, look, going back, believe it or not, at one point in time, I had a pretty decent head of hair, right? Like, you know, it. This was before kids, before marriage, you know, all this other stuff. I I actually had a head of hair, and in high school it was pretty strong, man, right? Like it was pretty strong. And, um, basically, you know, Top Gun was out and, uh, you know, so I got my hair like cut and the very top was extremely like spiky. You remember spiked hair, right? So because of it, all the kids at school gave me a nickname of spike and then here's the other part is I can't sing. Okay. Like I can't sing, but I was in the choir at school and we all had like custom shirts made and mine had spike on it as the nickname. Right. 
but I can't sing and I have no more spiky hair. Well, I guess in a way it's a little spiky, but you know, that's kind of a little tidbit about me. Did you have a mullet? I did not have a mullet. It would have no. gone good with the spike. I, I thought that's where he was going for sure. Me too. I, oh, I wow. had my fingers crossed. I was like, I, you know, work in the front, <laughs> fun in the back. Scott Todd. <laughs> that did not happen, but you know, <laughs> maybe, maybe I can grow it back. I don't know. Scott's like, but I'm a huge Kid Rock fan. So if you go to Reunion, they call you Spike still? I don't know. I'm in the Reunion. Oh, okay. Huh. <laughs> I'll just eat I don't know. Bread. I don't know. Eat some more bread, Mike. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll tell you guys something you might not know about me. Uh, did you guys know that I used to do magic? I used to do magic shows. I was a pretty good magician. And I can do, to this day, I can still do sleight of hand. And I can still do card tricks. And I can still be that annoying guy at a party that would be like, hey, do you want to see a trick? I'm All right. Show us a trick. I'm show us a yeah. Prove you it. Say, well, prove it. You want me to prove it real fast here? And don't turn your screen off and say you disappeared. Yeah, <laughs> I know. All right. Imagine him being like, you see me now? I'll, t- I'll tell you what. Now you don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll do it. I'll, I'll do the trick uh, in Orlando. I'll, I'll do it. But like, you, you know, God, so he's got to practice. The, the young yeah. kids, like when they come over, they love me. Like, do it, do the magic, do the magic. I'm like, okay. So, I, so I know magic. That's uh, that's one thing. Do, uh, do your yeah. kid, do your kids like? Do you do magic for their friends and embarrass them? No, I. Tr- well, first of all, if I just shared oxygen with my children's friends, I embarrass them. Okay. So <laughs> I try to leave the room. So and like, like, yeah. and if I'm like with my with my daughter. My wife reminds me, she's like, Mark, don't make conversation with her friends. Don't say anything to them because you'll embarrass her. Like, why, okay. don't you do, why don't you drop your uh, knowledge of rap culture on them? And no, okay, so the other thing that I don't think a lot of people know about is that I love rap. And I love Kanye West, J. Cole, Snoop Dogg. I got old school public enemy. I've been to concerts and... Uh, yeah, so I'm a, I'm a huge uh, rap fan, and it's uh, it's something people might not you know can, peg me, peg me. It's not it's not that geeky. It's kind of like hip and cool to to do, but I, I love it. So can you rap? <laughs> uh, no, but I can I can imitate. Did Did you know that uh, you I'm know, on an ultra light beam? I'm on an ultra light beam. <laughs> this is a god dream. This is a god dream. <laughs> this is everything. Wow. That is uh, from Life of Pablo, Ultralight Beam, which I think arguably might be one of the best rap songs ever. So is, if little Apple Music fans, I'll, I'll agree Kanye with West, that. Ultralight Beam. I'll agree with you on that. I'm not doing it justice All right. at all. Did, did you know that uh, when Eminem got sued um, over, I don't know, many years ago that um, – when the judge delivered his verdict, he actually wrapped the verdict. Did you know that? I did not know really? that. Yeah. Check out uh, Eminem ver- uh, lawsuit rap ju- rapping judge. It's real. That's very cool. That's very cool. Um, well, that was really, I thought that was an interesting segment and you know, no huge bombshells. I, I was kind of thinking Eric Peterson would be like, oh, nobody knows I have a second family. But he didn't. <laughs> He knows I carry a lightsaber. That's because you you told us it all had to be G-rated. Otherwise, we would have heard some real juicy stuff from. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, you know, I, you know, I had to say that to Zeno, by the way. (laughs) He's the only one I was worried about. I'm all about the G-rating. No, I, yeah, no, I know you, you and the firehouse culture, for sure. So, all right, tips of the week. Let's get let's get some good tips of the week. Eric, you're breaking Peterson, up, Mark. We, we, yeah, we I gotta go, yeah. guys. Sorry. Have a good lunch. <laughs> gotta go. All right, you guys. Are, I thought three, we were I, cutting I, this segment. I, I've got two tips of the week, and they're great. Do you guys want to see my tip? Okay, let's go. Okay, the first one. How about is five on one, four on one, four on one? I'm taking it on. The first tip of the week is integromat.com. I n t e g r o m a t dot com. It is a legit Zapier.com competitor, and it's less money. And it's, I would argue the user interface is uh, way more elegant than Zapier. Integromat.com. Save money 
and have a better user experience. Boom. I could drop the mic right there, guys. Check it out. Really? But I'm not going to drop the mic right there because I've got another tip of the week. I mean, if I have to do five, I'll do five. If you guys aren't going to carry me at all. Well, well um, wait a minute. I'm still looking at this last one, man. Like this thing. Yeah. Integra, man, it's cool. Eric it Peterson, cool. are you digging it? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for an integration with a mailing service because that's something I've been looking for. So... Um, well, why don't you just use not, lob? No, no, not like lob, like to, to print a label, to send a closing package or something. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Yeah. What can I okay. Find? Okay. Mike, th- uh, Mark, this might be pretty good, man. This might Thank be you. Good. Thank you. This, it's, 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 it's like IFTT and Zapier had a baby. This might be, wait, 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 wait. What's this integration with California bank and trust? What are they doing there? Boom. It's awesome, man. Integramat. Okay, okay. I'm gonna have to spend like I don't know four fourteen hours tonight looking at this. I know. I, I have, and it's awesome. Citibank. They integrate with Citibank too. Yeah, but look at the pricing. Nine bucks. Nine bucks. Ten thousand operations. One gig data transfer. Five minute interview. You can do a thousand operations for free. I don't know how many I spend, but man, I, I think I spend like fifty dollars a month. I, and I don't think I, I use spend at least 50 a month operation. for Zapier. Okay. Okay. This is, this has, okay. Oh, okay. This is, this is pretty mic. good. This is pretty good. This is like my air table. Well, like, I don't come know, up with great tips, but when I lightning, do, great. lightning strikes once a quarter for you. It's okay. Ouch. Oh, that hurt. I miss, right. I miss the compassionate. Scott what's, what's the next one? What's the next? All one? right. The next one is, okay. So I was complaining to Scott earlier today that I got to lose a few LBs, right? Um, I, you know, I was traveling. I kind of let myself go a little bit. And anyways, I went to a function. Long story short, my, my suit did not fit. So if anyone's ever experienced that, that feeling of, oh gosh, this won't button. Uh, it's not a fun feeling. So I'm doing the Tim Ferriss slow carb diet. And typically I have like, I eat big at boot camp. And I told Scott, like, no, no white, no flour for me until Saturday, which is my cheat day. And uh, he's like, okay, I won't judge. But I think, I think he said that. And then I think I heard him say something to his wife, like, you know, Mark's ruining it for all of us. But I, I'm not sure <laughs> if, he was, if he was mouthing that or what. But um, if you're dieting, right, the, the problem with it is like, well, what the hell do I eat now? It used to be really easy, like have a sandwich, have, you know, you know, whatever. So there's a website called swole.me, swole.me. And it uh, takes all the thinking out of it. Like, what am I going to eat? And it does it. So check out swole.me. Huh. All right. Okay. All right. Think? And it's free by the way. So that, that's two tips of the week. So I, how many calories am I eating the, uh, in four meals, Mark? How many? I, I don't count calories. I don't care about calories. Well, it's asking me how many calories do you want to eat today? I, I, say 5,000. No. I don't know. 2,500, 3,000. I'm going to gain weight that way. No, you're not. Just don't, it's, it's not calories. It's, it's the kind of calories. It's, you don't want to eat the, the, the sugar. It's all about insulin, right? Okay. All right. So it's saying like I can eat, you know, for dinner, I can eat chicken and brown rice with some vegetables. Okay. All right. Okay. This is pretty good too. All right. All right. My third tip of the week <laughs> is a book I'm reading, which I'm really enjoying. It is, uh, I mean, when I say I'm reading it, I'm not really reading it. I'm listening to it. It's a guide to the good life by William B. Arvine. Uh, the ancient art of stoic joy. And I'm really loving it. And uh, there's a lot of really, uh, you know, Mike Zeno Zen like wisdom. Uh, and I think the Stoics get a bad rap. So check out a guide to the good life. The ancient art of stoic joy. <coughs> Should I give two more? You're on a roll, man. I mean, we're, you're doing all of our work for us. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, this is the hardest I've worked. Uh, 
on a podcast in a long time. All right. Um, okay. Let's see here. <laughs> Searching deep, we're searching deep. All right, hold on. Have one well, I want to get, I want to get a good one. I want to get a good one. I, I don't want to take the one because I just downloaded it. And I really liked it, but you know what? I'm going to take it anyways. It is free video email for Gmail. It's a Chrome extension, and it's really easy. It's free. Um, you know, somebody buys raw land from you. Send them a quick, e- you know, instead of sending them an email, thank you for your purchase with Frontier Equity Properties. Shoot them a personalized email for free. It is, uh, go to freevideoemail.com. You can learn more about it at cloudhq.net. Or you can just go to the extension tab if you're using Gmail. Um, so that's the fourth one. And uh, I think Scott already gave that tip a few weeks no, ago as well. But no, the didn't. same company does a great screenshot for free as well. Cloudhq.net. Two, right. two cool, productive Chrome extensions. A great book. And two amazing websites. The Land Geek Audi. Yeah. Good podcast, guys. Are we good? We're good, Mark. Yeah. I mean, we this tip of the week thing was exhausting for us. All right. So so the next five weeks, I don't have to come up with a tip, correct? No, 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 no. No. Oh, yeah. Is that fair? Oh, we didn't say that. No, 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 no. Four weeks. Scott and Mike's like four weeks. Four my, Mike, Mike, no. you're breaking up. We can't we can't see or hear you. Four <laughs> weeks is fair. I didn't know we could like do them all at one time and like take, take, like bank. <laughs> yeah. That seems like kind of like a cheat to me. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, what would Superman do? He'd come back tomorrow next week with four more. Yeah. I think you just set the bar for yourself as a yeah. land geek. I think you should only be able to deliver <laughs> tips of the weekend increments of five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then you have to do an Arizona now property talking. for that. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know I, I wasn't going to bring this up on the podcast. And I didn't want to get nasty, but Uh-oh. my wife put in the dishwasher my Team Tate coffee mug. Uh-oh. And, it, and it, it's gone. So Aww. Karen and Ken, God. thank you for that, that mug. But now it's just a regular plain coffee mug that I delightfully drink from because I don't, <laughs> don't have to look. Don't worry, Tate. Mine is still in use at the Marriott, I'm sure. Well, I've still got mine, so I guess I'm on my own team now. So that's it, man. Jeez, you guys are a tough crew. All right. Well, I want to thank all the listeners for putting up with our shenanigans. Um, if you guys want to learn more, go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Um, schedule a call with uh, Mike or Scott. Learn more about flight school as well. And that's Scott Bossman, by the way, uh, not Scott Todd. And uh, also, just you know. Give us some love. Go to iTunes, subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of your review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 Passive Income Launch Kit. Today's podcast, again, is sponsored by landboto.com and postingdomination.com forward slash thelandgeek. You guys ready? Ready? One, One, two, two three. three. Let freedom ring. <laughs> I'll see you guys on Thursday. All right, Mark. Thanks, guys. See ya. Hey, you know, you know what's cool is um, every time we finish a flight school group, not a session, but a, we, we send people through flight school, is I always tell them, like, okay, I give them, like, their final marching instructions. And then we, um, we open up, I open up the microphone and I'm all right. I'm always like, okay guys, you know, what's coming next, right? One, two, three. And they all do it. It's, it's, it's awesome. So that tells me that they do listen to that last segment. They know what we're talking about. That is cool. Does anybody bring up the bonus segment? Like the, or talking about that or no? The bonus? What do you mean? Like, like this kind of thing. Oh, like, no, you know, no, like, like in here, I don't think anybody listens to this piece. I don't think anybody listens to it. Well, you have the question, right, for the flight, for the uh, boot camp from last week's podcast? Oh, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll have to do that. Yeah, we'll have to do that. <laughs> for sure. I forgot. We have to go back and find out. <laughs> By the way, I was thinking we should do uh, like, Land Geek boot camp, like Land Geek Boot Camp Bingo. What do you guys think? Like for every time, every time you say that one thing that you say, is yeah. it a good idea? Like, right, right car or something yeah hmm. 
That's a pretty good idea. Well, like, so every time, every time someone says something like, you know, someone could just like punch their little card so that they stay, stay uh, focused. Yeah. Yeah. So like, you know, you're like, okay, what, what are the, the, you know, the checklist for due diligence and they're like ingress, egress, legal, illegal access. Like, okay, punch your card. They're like, you know, title free and clear. Okay. Punch your card. Um, you know, where's the first place you want to market? You know, the neighbors. Okay. Punch your card. That's a good idea. All right. Next time, because I know I'm not going to have the time to build bingo cards. <laughs> Danielle, are you listening? Danielle. <laughs> knowing, Tate, knowing Danielle, she's like, okay, I'm on it. Like, Tate, Tate's like, on it. it. Tate's on it. I can see him right now. I'm not going to. I'm not going to ask her to make bingo cards. That she's. Oh, good. look at what he did there. Look at how he deflected, man. He, Whoa. that was a karate kid move, right? Like <laughs> he, he just took that mark and he's just like, like, he, yeah. Like, he, he just, was, he just drew moved that over to Zeno. That was, a, that was a Mike Zeno move right there. Yeah. Mike's, Mike's all about the martial arts. He's like using your weight against you. <laughs> you know, by the way, Mike, I, I really like, if you're going to say, okay, you know, you should really get into this discipline of martial arts. Like, which would be the first to start? I was thinking about doing jujitsu. I don't know. Well, that's very popular right now, and I think it's good because it's it's like a thinking man's game. It's like chess. You don't have to be some big burly dude. You know, you can just be a regular guy, and so that's actually probably a really good idea. Yeah, but when you're as you know muscular as me, <laughs> you know, I shouldn't I be using my my physical assets? <laughs> I no. have to conserve them. I have to conserve them. <laughs> <laughs> Tate's laughing. <laughs> uh, we've digressed. <laughs> it really, it, this is this is really devolved. That should have been your <laughs> thing about yourself. You were once jacked. You were once I was I was once jacked. Yeah. You were carjacked? <laughs> no, no. I I looked like I I had no neck. I had like muscles at one point. This is before I met my wife. Wow. I would drink like the 3,000 calorie shakes after workout. I had personal trainer. I, wow. I, could, I was fairly, well, I was big for me. Like you wouldn't look at me and be like, oh, that's a big guy. Because I'm just not genetically built that way. But I was big for me. Well, did your wife see any of this or not? It's just no, like no, she did. And she's like, you have no neck. Put the chicken bone down and slim down, buddy. Like, I believe this as much as I do the story of Spike. Oh, oh, <laughs> man. Scott, you gotta, you gotta bring the evidence. Oh, I don't know if I have any evidence. I can bring my high school yearbook picture and it showed all my hair. I don't know, man. There you go. I don't know. Uh, the proof is in the pudding. Wow. wow. Yeah. I mean, wow. Scott, is this, well, is this, can you prove that you were, you visit all these continents? Sure. Mm. You want pictures? <laughs> well, how do I know they're not photoshopped? Uh, I Eric, yeah. you're not helping me here, man. Good call, Eric. But actually, I had to redo my passport. Oh, see. Ah, yeah. But I still have my old one. So. Can you bring pictures of every continent? Sure. Non photoshopped? Non photoshopped. How about me, like riding a camel through the Sahara Desert? Would that work? <laughs> I actually, yeah. even here. Only if you have your fishing sand. pole with you. I have some sand from the Sahara Desert right whoa, here whoa, on my whoa, desk. Whoa, 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 Mark, what, what, what is this? Got some sand from the is Sahara Desert. Pablo Escobar material right there? <laughs> it does look like Pablo Escobar. <laughs> <laughs> I, but speaking of, I've, I've been watching on Netflix. Uh, Narcos. Uh, Narcos, it's great. Great. I finished it, yeah. So well Are you done with season three? Yeah. Great show. Dang. My wife and I, over the weekend, we went to go see, um, we actually went to a movie, which we haven't done in a long time. We went to go see the, um, the Tom Cruise movie, American Made. Yeah. Oh, that was really good. Really good. All right. Cool. Yeah, check it out. You, you would like it. But if you like Narcos, you'd like it. All, All right. right. For, the, for those of you that stayed on this long to listen to the podcast, thank you. I'm going to stop. Wow. 